public perception is uh, a little different than what we would expect. They think for some reason that this was a very dangerous place to live, to do time in, that we had to be on guard in the mess hall, the dining room at all times. They think that there was danger on the yard when we had recreation and in the workplace and all of that. And the honest truth is that there were some bad boys here, you know, and I'm not saying that it wasn't a dangerous place. I'm just saying that the bad boys didn't go around pounding on their chest and talking out of the side of their mouth like Hollywood gangsters. Real bad boys don't have to do that. You know, they earn respect. You know who they are. You don't mess with them, and they don't mess with you. And there were some odd people here, like the Birdman and a few of the Creepy Carpus. And they were odd. They weren't crazy. They were rational. We worked together. We ate together. We played together. The most dangerous man here was a man named Simcoe, S-I-M-C-O-X. He was young, he was handsome, he did push up standing on his head. He was also the politest man here, and the most respectful man here. You had nothing to fear from him ever, unless you got in his face seriously and disrespected him, then he would kill you. Now he killed a guy down in the shower room stabbed him with a knife a bunch of times. Guard threw a roll of toilet paper at him trying to break it up. Wasn't about to get close to that knife. And the guard was a was a witness and a murder. He was a correctional officer. Eyewitness went to court and testified against Simcoe. Jury said not guilty. You know why they said not guilty? They said if he did kill a guy, it must have been in self defense to keep from being eaten alive or raped or no telling what. What was he doing there with those monsters to begin with? Not guilty. And that actually happened. Simcoe was found not guilty. He was brought back to prison here and put in the hole. Of course, the guards, they knew he was guilty, so they put him in the hole, and he stayed there for a long time. And finally, they let him out. Alcatraz was a lockdown prison. This is where they sent you for breaking rules in other prisons. And there was no freedom of movement here whatsoever. Now, there, were only, there were only about 250 pre people here, prisoners, and there was no drugs here. There was no gangs here. This was before the gangbangers went to federal prisons. State prisons had all the gangbangers, but this was a federal prison. This was before all the drug laws, before the gun laws were on the federal books. I have some very good friends here, a couple of them in particular, and I met it again and again throughout life.
uh, Forrest Tucker, man. I love that guy. He was a he was a band leader here. He played a clarinet. He played a saxophone. We had a little band. We practiced in the uh, below the mess hall and uh, off the shower. They had the showers down in the basement. They opened the door at the top of the stairs on Saturday morning. They let everybody, all the band members down. Then they locked the door and they took off. The reason being they couldn't stand the music. We probably had the, the worst band in the whole world. The guards could not stand the music. The last I heard of Forrest Tucker, he was 90 years old, had long white hair. He was down in Texas robbing banks. And he loved to rob banks. Well, this is Alcatraz. First of all, this is Alcatraz Island. This is Alcatraz Prison. And we are in what used to be the dining room store uh, unit. You know, the, this was a storehouse with a dining room. It's in the basement of the dining room. They've converted this into a, a bookstore. A, souvenir shop, a museum store, the, the whole works. A lot of uh, books have been written about this place and they display those for sale. I wrote a book myself titled Alcatraz 1259. I just happen to have one hair like this, you know, that and actually I've sold a hundred thousand copies sitting right here in the last three years and which is pretty good I mean we were criminals you know that's what we did everybody who came here with the exception of a few were hardcore money criminals I mean we weren't child molesters or rapos or any of that we were just hardcore criminals we were bank robbers we were all kinds of different uh, careers and criminals <laughs> came out of this place. I don't know. I, like I say, I had many friends here, a couple of them in particular, that I met again and again throughout life. And that's what I remember when I come back here. That's the good. And that is the good. You try to explain the good and the bad, that's the good. And as far as I'm concerned, as far as my motivation for coming here, I come here, I have fun. I meet people from all over the world. I, and that's fun. I'm also earning money legally and that's fun. And every time I take a picture with a pretty woman, the old warden rolls over in his grave, and that's fun. But the most fun of all, man, I'm serious now. Due to hard work and a publication of this book, I now have a house, a car, a wife, and a dog, and I'm proud of it. Thank you.